Spider-Man 2 is a perfect sequel. Think about it and tell me I'm wrong. And the crazy thing is, whatever Spider-Man property you think I'm talking about, I'm right. Well, all except for an Andrew Garfield's case. However, for everything else Spider-Man, the sequel manages to up the ante for the emotional and physical stakes when it comes to its characters. And the villain challenges Peter, or Miles, in ways that test his morals and his perseverance in living up to and supporting those ideals. But today, I want to talk about the video game Spider-Man sequel that came out exclusively on PlayStation. Because while the story isn't perfect, I think it's a pretty great Venom story. Welcome to Sandwich Reviews. I'm the Talking Sentient Sandwich, and I absolutely loved every minute I played of Spider-Man 2. I'm gonna get right into spoilers, so if you haven't played it, this is your only warning. There are some major twists involved that made the experience of playing it something I will remember forever. So if you don't want that spoiled for you, pause the video. Play 20 or so hours of Spider-Man 2, then come back. I will be here waiting. Ready? Okay. It's not much of a spoiler, but the first thing I have to mention is how phenomenal the side content is. Although it may not be as concise with its overall storytelling as, say, God of War, there are still a couple of missions that genuinely got to me. The next thing I have to mention is the map. Bigger than ever, the amount of distance that you have to cover to get from one side to the other is staggering, but traveling that far isn't boring. In fact, the traversal in this game is single-handedly the best traversal mechanics that I have ever seen. It makes me want to not use the fast travel, which is a groundbreaking development that went completely unnoticed because who wants to use that? I don't. I want to swing. And as you're effortlessly swinging and gliding around, making every movement as graceful as possible, the buildings and ground are lined with incidental details that flesh out the world. Sometimes it's as big as the Avengers Tower, and sometimes it's a small piece of art that is barely ever seen, if at all. But I would always find myself stopping in my tracks just to look at whatever easter eggs the developers hid. Most of the time, I'm swinging by so fast that those insular details aren't noticed, but it's an effort that reminded me of the Arkham games, where a clear love for the source material can be seen just from looking around the environment. And it's even more impressive this time around, considering the whole city is populated head to toe with people just living their lives. And once you're done staring at the different buildings and art dotted around the place, the game itself is also fantastic to play. The gameplay is the same as the first, but it added where it needed to and kept the rest the same. From minute one, you might be convinced it really is nothing more than the first, but plenty of combat mechanics can be unlocked. And then, there's Venom. More than anything else, the gameplay does a phenomenal job of immersing the player into the story and the emotions behind it, though I still think it should have gone further with some aspects. Because early on, there's a flashback where Peter punches a hole in a wall in his room, and May sees that and turns it into a chance for him to learn. She starts drawing it into a face and labels it something that I thought was going to be the perfect encapsulation of the themes within the game. Balance is a process, not a destination. And while I thought they stretched themselves a little thin as far as themes go, I still thought that was the perfect way to get the players to start thinking about that idea. Later on, Peter gets the symbiote, and we get the same old mean Spider-Man we all know and love from Raimi's third movie. But that immersive gameplay was what really worked for me, because the fun I had brutalizing the bad guys was a little scary at times. That ability where you basically turn on your Spartan rage is so addicting. The audio work alone glued my eyes and ears to the screen every single time I did that. But it was maybe the third or fourth time I used that ability, or the yank where you grab everyone in your line of sight, and I said out loud, This is awesome. I don't ever want to stop doing this. And due to me saying that to myself, I began considering where the story was going. Because inevitably, they were going to take the symbiote away, and I was afraid of that. I felt the gameplay was incredibly entertaining only because of it. I mean, come on, we were doing so well. And that was the point. While the boss battle where the player fights Peter as Miles is spectacular, it was the dialogue and acting from those lines that drew me into the drama that the game had been trying to depict up until then. 
Maybe I was too invested in the gameplay itself to focus on anything else, but that was where I really got the message. And while I'm talking about that fight, I should mention that that was the one thing I was able to predict. I mean, if you're gonna have two playable Spider-Men in your game, of course you're gonna make them fight each other. The one thing I did get wrong about that guess is I figured the game would let you decide who you fight as. Another thing I predicted but got entirely wrong was the identity of Venom. One of the game creators said something like, it'll be someone you don't expect. So naturally I started my conspiracy board. And let me tell you, I was confident Craven would get the symbiote. In the comics, almost everyone has had a go. I think the writers added some extra scenes with Scorpion only because in the past, he's also been Venom. But I went back to reread Craven's last hunt during the lead up to the game's release, and something stuck out. Craven buries Spider Man alive, which is another thing I thought for sure would be in the game. But anyway, he proceeds to put on his suit and go around being Spider Man to see what it's like. And the most fascinating thing is the suit that he puts on is the black symbiote suit that Peter had just recently gotten from his time on Battleworld during the original Secret Wars storyline. And just from Venom's size alone, Craven fits that silhouette much better. But I was way off base with that, yes. After 20 minutes of playing the game, the story introduced Harry, and I immediately knew he was going to be Venom. I mean, that should have been obvious just from the tease from the first game, but his whole heal the world thing makes it a little on the nose. But it is still great, because after he becomes Venom, that on the nose storytelling is allowed to fully dive into what they were trying to say. Plus, during that, we got the most surprising aspect of the game. Harry morphs into his final form, and I swear, the camera goes behind Peter's back just to get the players hyped for a boss battle. But then, Norman steps in the way, and the game proceeds to give the player control of Venom. And I could replay that sequence of the game a million times, and still be entertained each time. I wish that whole part was longer, or there was another mission where you played as Venom, but the ending to that sequence alone made it all worth it. I didn't think the game was even allowed to go that far, but Venom chomps Craven's head and they showed quite a bit of it. Not everything, mind you, but enough to give a kid nightmares if they happen to see it. That fight where you're Venom going against Craven isn't the best out of the many boss battles in the game, but there are a ton. A bunch more than the first game. If I had to pick, I think my favorite may be the one early on with Sandman, but adding lots of unique boss battles was another aspect that the developers made sure to get right this time around. And speaking of that, let's talk about the one thing that is universally hated from the first game, the MJ missions. I thought for sure they'd be gone for the sequel, but I started playing as MJ and I had to pause the game, set down the remote, and sigh for about 10 full seconds. But then I gave it a chance, and I did end up enjoying every time I played as MJ. If I were playing a story-driven walking simulator style game, these would be standout sequences that I would be enamored with. And the horror-inspired way that we see the symbiote taking control of Peter from MJ's perspective was nothing short of masterful. Yet, I was taken out slightly whenever those missions came up. Inherently, those sequences just won't work. It's a game where I want to swing around super fast and fight 20 people at once with acrobatic punches while shooting venom arms, tendrils, and bombs. Slowing everything down to play as a normal person may work for the overall pacing of the story, and may even work more or less from player to player, but at times it just didn't work for me. But then again, at times it did. But back to cool Venom gameplay, because the symbiote was taken away from us, and I was just me, and it kinda sucked. Those electric arms are cool, and I do like using that ability where you shoot a bunch of people at once with them, but man, I missed the Venom yank. Now, I like to consider myself up to date on all the inexplicably complicated lore in every superhero's mythos, especially when it comes to Batman, Superman, and Spider-Man. So I should have expected that by featuring Mr. Negative in this Venom storyline, they would have anti-Venom. Yet, that caught me completely off guard, and I absolutely loved it. By making Peter anti-Venom, the player is allowed to keep those cool Venom abilities that I missed so very much. 
and the game managed to surprise me even more than that. And a lot of that comes from the symbiote stuff. That goes 10 times further than I thought the story would, and I was here for all of it. Well, most. Giving the game a boss battle with MJ where she scream is an amazing touch too. More credit could be given to comic writers like Donny Cates, but I still enjoyed seeing all that stuff. Like when they first introduced the rock with the swirl. I don't know why, but my first thought was, are we gonna see Null? Obviously not, but despite half of them not culminating in the story, all those teases in the game went a long way to making the experience more fulfilling to play. The one thing that did take me out of the last act of the game was making a ton of random people symbiote monsters. I guess they had to make a version of Venom-like enemies to fight, but them being citizens that the player beats the crap out of until the symbiote leaves them wasn't thought out. But other than that, the game is a perfect sequel to the first, and a fantastic story to watch in between swinging around the city at Mach 1. If you've played it, let me know your thoughts. And as always, thanks for watching. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe for weekly videos and reviews, and enjoy a delicious sandwich.